Do you see what time it is? Mm hmm. freeconferencecall.com. You are helping people around the world communicate for free. Please enter your access code yeah. followed by the pound or hash sign. Give me the rest of the number. 644-0172. Dash time. If you are the host, press star now. Otherwise, please wait, and you will be joined. Please enter your mm -hmm. PIN, followed by the pound or hash. Nine seven. If you do not know your what? PIN, please Nine enter seven, pound three, three. or hash. I hit hash. Hash. Thank you. You are the only participant in the conference. <laughs> now you got to be quiet for a few minutes, okay? six o'clock and it is time now for our uh, Tuesday evening Bible study with the Living Bread Church of Grace and Hope Hi. and Hi. thank you for joining us thank you for joining us I see that uh, Sister Marjorie Spearman is with us this afternoon amen thank you for joining us today and we don't have anyone that's on the phone just yet. I've talked to several people, when, and they are going to get on. They may be a little late. I see someone just got on. Amen, amen, amen. We'll, good evening, Marilyn. Good evening. We'll be studying from our precepts from, from Living, uh, Urban Ministries Incorporated, Bible in one year. And it has been an awesome study. I cannot begin to tell you how we've all enjoyed this study so far. To God be the glory. Let us have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we truly thank you for just allowing us to be in your presence today. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for traveling mercies for everybody as they travel to and fro from their jobs uh, and home and, and anywhere else that they had to go, Lord. Thank you for traveling mercies. So, Lord, today, as we study about Job, help us to understand about tragedies, that they will come. It's not a matter that they may come or may occur, but they will come. But, Lord, help us to know that through every situation, Every situation, every tragedy, anything that comes against us or we're in, you are with us. You are with us, no matter what it is. So, God, we thank you and we praise you. And as we start this lesson, as I always ask, will the real teacher come? This I ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, as we get started here today, I just want some uh, some of you to know that we are coming from you to you in Myrtle Beach. We're not at home. Amen. But we're continuing with our Bible study. Amen. To God be the glory. I just feel like you can't just miss any of these lessons. Amen. But 
you know, not my will, but God's will. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Our lesson today, when tragedy occurs, and it is in the book of Job. Our focal verses is Job first chapter, verses 14 through 15, verses 18 through 19, and then the 22nd verse. Then we go to the third chapter, verses 1 through 3, and then verse 11. And yes, we have our grandbaby with us. Amen. She is with us today. <laughs> She's with us these few days. We'll be down here. Amen. To God be the glory. Our aim for change. By the end of the lesson, we will discuss some of the insights for living with suffering caused by tragedy. We're going to be challenged to share our feelings about specific tragedies in our own lives. And we're going to identify ways to work with God to use our suffering to serve a higher purpose. Amen. I, di I don't hear Gary on today, so I'm going to ask JJ. He'll be reading the In Focus. Good evening. Hi. Okay. Job, when tragedy occurs. Hi. After Roger lost his daughter in a drive-by shooting, he still remained a faithful believer. He even forgave the shooters, but he continued to struggle with the mission that God had given him. God wanted him to evangelize to the underprivileged children in the community where his daughter was murdered. He went to his minister for counseling where he hoped to find answers that might reconcile his rebellion against God. <clears throat> After engaging in small talk, Roger released his well of emotions. I want to continue the work God set out for me, but I can't. I keep asking myself, why did God let this happen? Why should I go back into that community? His minister listened and let the Holy Spirit guide his words. Listen, Roger, you must lean on the fact that all the promises of God are endless, but they all end with a period. We cannot change the fact that all God's promises are endless but they all end with period. We cannot change God's periods. Roger Confused asks, what do you mean? Reverend White continued, death is a period. God has an eternal story that he has written. When a death in the family, floods or tainers come, a believer's way, we cannot help but ask God why he allows those things to happen to his people. What I'm suggesting is that instead of bringing up the questions marks, we must strive for a comma. Roger sighed in disappointment. <clears throat> what does a comma have to do with the questions that are weighing on my heart? A comma means to wait for the answer. Sometimes the answer to life's questions come only by trusting what God has written on the next page in eternity. If God wants you in that community, he may well use your suffering for his higher purpose. When tragedy occurs, today's lesson tells us to continue talking with God. He wants to dialogue with us about everything, even about our doubts and fears. Mm, amen, amen, amen. Um, we, we did it! We've all, mm -hmm. we've all had some tragedies in our lives. The, the, the sudden loss of a loved one, the sudden loss of a loved one, or... Um, even just, just going, just going through a, a, a bad turmoil is for some, a tragedy is if they have to file bankruptcy, uh, for them, that's a tragedy. That's, that's a hard pitfall in their lives that they have to do that. Uh, some sicknesses, some sicknesses to some, Everybody know that when someone say that they've got cancer, everything becomes hush, silent. It's, it's like it's a silent killer, you know, a long pro, a long, a prolonged killer in somebody's life. And uh, for some families, they think that is a tragedy because it's something that they're not ready for something that they haven't prepared for. But, you know, you can't prepare for anything. Even when you think you are prepared, you're not prepared. You're not prepared. You're not prepared. 
And particularly when things happen suddenly, when things happen suddenly. This is a good lesson on uh, Job. We all know the story of Job. We all know what, what, uh, what he went through. We all know how he lost everything, including his family. We all know that, uh, his children. We all know that he, his wife looked at him through his sickness that, that, that came upon him and wanted him to curse God and just die because it was just that bad. It was just that bad. So it's not a lesson that we don't know about. It's a lesson that we are familiar with. And if truth be told, some of these things we're familiar with in our lives. <clears throat> we're familiar with in our lives. So to God, to so to God be the glory. Let me uh, say good evening. I say good evening to Marjorie Spearman, who's with us. Renata has joined us. Latanya has joined us out of um, Cincinnati, and. Uh, She's on here asking about Hazel. She said Hazel was leading church service last Sunday, worship service, and now she's leading the Bible study. <laughs> uh, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Come here so they can see you. Come here. Come I, here. I wanted to do something different tonight with this lesson, Come but here so we'll, we'll go on with the way, with the way we've been doing it. Because we're going to capture these things that I want Come here so everybody can to see you. capture Come. in the lesson, yeah. uh, in Go the verse by verse scripture. We're going to capture these things, believe it or not. We're, we're, we're going to do that. Hi. We're going to do that. Um, but I do want to read what I think should have been the introduction. I'm going to read this. What uh, more light on the text? I think that should have been the intro, the uh, background. I'm sorry, not the introduction, but basically the background. The title of this week's lesson isn't isn't if tragedy occurs, but when. Unexpected tragedies are realities in all of our lives. Accident, acts of nature, and deliberate criminal behavior are often the causes. Of the four tragedies that befell Job, two resulted from human actions and two from acts of nature. None occurred because of something Job had done. The crush of crimes and calamities that confronted Job forced him to make a choice. Could he justify trusting God when faced with the unfairness of life? Or was the pain of tragedy a sufficient reason to deny God's love or his power to overcome evil or both? People have struggled with this question in the past, and every living person must still seek answers to it today. And then I'm going to jump here to the last paragraph where it says that Job was a godly man. God described him to Satan as a perfect, blameless, and upright man. He lived a blessed life. The second verse in chapter one tells us that Job had 10 children. 10 was not symbolic of perfection, but of fullness or sufficiency. Seven of his children were sons. The number seven was symbolic of perfection. So with 10 children, seven of whom were sons, Job had all a man could ask for in a family. In addition, Job was enormously rich. And verse 3 lists his possessions, sheep and camels in the thousands. Owning one camel was a sign of wealth and status. To have thousands of camels suggested Job was a caravan operator or a dealer in camels. Job had 500 yoke of oxen. A yoke holds two oxen. Thus, 500 yoke means he owned 1,000 oxen. Taken together, these details tells us that Job was a highly successful, well-respected, happy, godly man. Yet all that was about to change. All of that was about to change. And we're going to see how it changed. And we're going to see how friends act when tragedy falls in your life. 
So if someone would read verses 14 through 15, and then the end death, Job tragedies. Did that come back on? Okay. A messenger arrived at Joe's home with this, with this news. Your oxen were found with the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabaeans raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farmhands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Joe's tragedy. Truly, Joe was a godly man who left no stone unturned in his devotion to God. Yet, Within a matter of seconds, he received the worst possible news from four messengers, one on the heels of the other. He was wiped out by natural calamity and the vicious, the vicious attack of men. All these tragedies were the work of the accuser, Satan. Job had no idea that Satan was using him to challenge God, nor did Job know that his suffering would be used by God to defeat Satan. Job's life had become a combat zone where God and Satan battled for Job's allegiance. God was pleased to announce to Satan that Job was a unique and most faithful servant. Satan counted God's boast by charging that Job was faithful only because he enjoyed God's favor. In short, Satan told God that when his blessings cease to flow in Job's direction, he will curse thee to thy faith. For reasons known only to him, God responded to Satan's challenge in a way that would ultimately test Job's resolve to be faithful in the absence of divine blessings. As soon as God released Job into Satan's power, Job was struck with a terrible series of tragedies. The writer uses four different scenes to illustrate that over an unknown period of time, Job was deprived of every material blessing and nearly all family and friendship ties. Job was completely stripped of all God's favor. Eventually, his health failed and he was left destitute. Satan had, Satan had Job where he wanted him, namely outside of God's apparent protection. We should note, however, that Job's destitute position was due not to Satan's power, but to God's power. The writer wants his readers to know that Satan could do nothing to Job without God's permission. While Job may not have been immediately aware of God's active and continued intervention, he was aware of God's availability. Suffering many blind, suffering they blind us to God's active intervention, but it need not blind us to his availability. God is always available to us, even though he may not be able to see any evidence of his intervention. Faith enables us to see that God is always keeping watch over his own. Mm. Mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We all know that uh, the beginning of Job starts out with the Lord calling a meeting, calling a meeting. And at this meeting, who shows up? Satan shows up at this meeting where God has called. <laughs> Satan has showed Satan has showed up at this meeting where God has called. God calls a meeting, Satan shows up. You know, the first thing that tells me is that you don't live a life that Satan can't show up and show himself up in. He showed up. Right. And and he wanted he he let God know, you know, I I'm gonna I'm gonna test. I'm gonna test some of your people. And God told him, test Job, basically. Test Job. You wanna test test my servant Job. I know he won't deny me. 
And Satan was letting God know, oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. But God let him know you can do anything that you want to him, but you will not have his soul. You will not have that. You can do whatever you want to him, but you won't. You will not have his soul. And God knew the faithfulness of Job. He knew how faithful Job was. And that's why he said, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I've got faith in Job. Don't do anything to hurt his life. You can't take his life. You will not take his life. You will not take his life and you won't take his soul. And, and I've got faith enough to believe that Job will not deny me no matter what you do to him. He will not do it. That's something, isn't it? That lets you know just... It is. And it lets you know how bold the devil is. If the devil is bold enough to confront God and challenge him, what, what, do, you, what do you think he does with us? We just little people. We, we, we're just little people. Just little people. Just little people. Lord have mercy. Renata says that there is faith again. There is faith again. And she says, yes, yeah, so true. If they have been up all their life and not depending on anyone. But I'm learning that in those moments that when our faith is increased and we have to activate our now faith. Yeah. Okay. There, there's that word faith again. Okay. And then she says he is everywhere too. Satan. That's why we have to keep praying and pray in the Holy Ghost because that confuses the enemy. Like when we praise him, we are going through. It confuses the enemy. So we, we see here that he, he does his first thing with, with um, Job. He does the first thing he does with Job. Lord have mercy. He has some people, the Sabians. He has another group of people to come over, to come over and raid and kill the animals. Steal, steal animals. Everything that he got. Everything that he got. And, and I'm always teasing somebody about things. I said, well, if something happens, somebody got to stay behind and tell the story. <laughs> but there was a messenger that went to him. And in, the, and in the Greek, this messenger means an angel. An angel went back and told, came home, came and told Job what had happened. Job wasn't looking for anything to be happening to him because... Like the, like, like, like the Bible says in Gaza, he was an upright man. He was a faithful man. In Job's eyes, he was doing everything that God would want him to do. He was doing it. He was doing it. God wasn't, God wasn't finding fault in what Abraham done because he did everything like he was supposed to. So he was shocked. He was shocked that that would happen to him. And then that being a rich man. And then when we see in the next verses, something else happened. Something else happened. Satan can't do anything unless God allow it. I don't care what it is. He can't do anything unless God allows it. That's why when he sat there in the midst of the meeting, he had to get permission. He had to get permission. And a lot of us don't believe that. A lot of us think that we just do things and, and everything. Oh, God, you know, I, I was doing this and this happened to me. And I was doing this and that happened to me. Think Satan needs permission when he attacks God's children. He needs permission. 
He does. And God allows him the permission to do what he does. And everything that happens to us is not necessarily Satan. Not necessarily Satan. We, we give him credit for a lot of things that happen in our lives. But a lot of times, it ain't necessarily him. It's because we've made bad decisions and bad choices. Job didn't make no choice here with all this happening around him. He didn't make no choice. He didn't even know it was going to happen. He didn't even know it was going to happen. But it did. It did. It did happen. And like was said, that's why we have to praise God all the time. It confuses him. That's why we have to give God the glory all the time. It confuses him. But Isaiah says, no weapon formed against us will not prosper. He didn't say the weapon would not form. He didn't say that. He said it would not prosper. It Prospering has a lot to do with our decisions. When something comes against us, it has a lot to do with the way we respond. Anybody, anybody else? Anybody else? Marilyn? What is that spell? Yeah. <laughs> you got anything you want to add to it? Renata said is I've, I've heard several uh, Bible scholars, uh, theologians that talks about uh, now faith. And then I've heard them say that no, it's being read wrong. It's, it's not now faith. It's, it's saying that now faith and keep on reading. Now faith of so and so and so. You know, not not you have a now faith. You, you, you have a now faith. Oh, I, I, I believe in it right now. And then tomorrow you don't believe in it. The next few seconds you don't believe in it. You know, faith is faith. Faith, right. faith don't come in with a right now attitude. It comes when it, when faith is there, it, it's, it's endured. It's endured. That's, that's how I, I look at faith. It's endured. You know, it, it, all along, all along, your faith grows, your faith build. All along, it grows. It grows. And God knows because we are human, you know, that we need that growth in our faith. We need it. We, we need to build our faith and we build it every day by, by seeing the things that he does in our lives, by how he works in our lives and not just our lives, but in other people lives, in other people lives. You know, we don't, we don't need to think that God only, only does anything for us. We can see him working in other people lives. Don't covet somebody else's uh, faith. Don't covet what they, don't covet their strong belief in faith, you work on your faith. Don't covet somebody else's. Don't covet somebody else. Don't sit there and say, I wish I had the faith that somebody else had. No, 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 no. You work on getting your... You know, you know how I look at... Go ahead. You know how I look at that. When you say covet somebody else's faith, you don't know, well, we don't know what that person went through to get the faith that they have. Lord have mercy. The struggles and the trials that they had. Lord have mercy. And, and that, and that's one reason why we shouldn't be trying to covet it. Let people, you just, you just move on with 
and, and learn and learn to trust God yourself. Learn to trust him yourself. Learn to do that yourself. Right. Okay, verses 18 and 19. Job's nonverbal response to his tra- to his tragedies. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's home. Suddenly a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children are dead. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. <clears throat> Job's nonverbal response to his tragedies. Upon hearing the reports of his tragic losses, Job remained silent. The reader is informed of Job's silence by the writer's use of the poetic device while he, the messenger of Job's bad news, was yet speaking. This phrase implies that Job's first response to the tragedies reported to him what was one of complete silence. The sudden news about the successive tragedies renders Job speechless. He says nothing. Job is deeply shaken. He is able to express himself only with the mourning gestures known in ancient Israel. He rent his mantle, tore his robe, and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground. Silence is a natural first response to tragedy which affects us personally. We cannot immediately put our feelings into words. We are shocked, stunned, and in some ways traumatized. Words elude us. We can only cry and groan inwardly. We may even express ourselves in a primordial scream that expresses our sense of helplessness in the face of circumstances we wish were different, but no, we cannot change. Our emotions swing back and forth between anger and denial. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. First, here comes somebody to tell me that all my animals was uh, my animals were stolen, and all them that wasn't stolen, they was killed. And while they telling that, here comes somebody else in there and telling me that my children, all of them, all ten of them, while they were together feasting and having a good time. And, and enjoying one another. <sighs> Storm comes. The house collapsed. And killed every one of them. Now, that's a lot for somebody to swallow at one time. A lot. It, it's hard to swallow when you hear about one child dying in a disaster. But all 10 of them together, all 10 of them together. Job has, Job has something on his hands, has something on his mind. Lord have mercy. And who would not think for the first time, if you're that close to the Lord, what is going on? What have I done? What? What could I have? Why me? Why me? Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord have mercy. And then here comes his body. And, we, and, and, and it doesn't tell us in this, in this part of the lesson, but we know what happened. His body. His body. Lord have mercy. Mm. With boils on him, where pus is running out of, oh goodness. And he wasn't like that for just a day or two. Wasn't like that for just a day or two. This rich man, all of a sudden has nothing. And on top of that, sick. On top of that, sick. And friends well, don't bump here. <clears throat> coming by and looking at him, his wife telling him, you know, you, you need to curse God and, and, and just die. He done took our children. 
He's taken everything that we've owned. Here you were the richest man in, in, on this side of the kingdom. You was, you were rich. We had everything. We didn't want for nothing. Our children didn't want for nothing. And then his friends going to come and that. What, what have you done, Joe? What have you done? Yeah. You, you had to do something. This kind of stuff don't happen unless you sin. <laughs> and Job knew yeah, he hadn't done. Your fault, Job. Yeah. And he knew he hadn't done nothing. He knew he hadn't done anything. That's why with this lesson, it helps us to see. Yes. A lot of times things happen to us because of the wrong we have done. Because Galatians says, you're going to reap what you sow. If you sow bad seeds, you're going to reap bad seeds. If you sow good seeds, you're going to reap good seeds. That's true. You're going to reap what you sow. But in this case, yeah. Job had not reaped, had not sowed any bad seeds. Not to his knowledge. Not to his knowledge. He didn't even know that he was the a part of a challenge. He didn't know. And it was a good thing he didn't know. It was a good thing he didn't know. Because what he did by standing up for the Lord, by saying, no matter what I go through, it's okay. And, and you know, the scripture is there that no matter what I'm going through, no matter, no matter what, if death if I don't heal on this side, then I know I'll be, it's well for me on the other side. Job couldn't have said it and meant it if he did, if he known there was a challenge. That he was part of a challenge. He couldn't have said it and meant it. When he looked in his friend's face and told him, what's wrong with y'all? What's, what, why, why do you think I had to have done something wrong? Why? 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 I, I serve a God. I serve a God that's good. But it does tell you that there was a, a time when he said, why was I born? God, why did you let me even be born to go through this? To suffer like I'm suffering. I wish that even if I had been born, I still would have just closed my eyes and died at birth. That's how bad he felt. And I know, I, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I know there's times that I've been through some things that I've said, Lord, why? Why? It just it just seemed like, oh my God, just seemed like, oh God, if I go to sleep and never wake up again, that might be better off for me. This lesson lets us know that it's not all the time things that we have done when we've made bad choices that evil befalls us or come against us. It also let us know that sometimes we don't know when Satan has went to God and says, you know what? I'm going to try this one today. I'm, 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 I'm going to try this one today. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to try about 20,000 of them today. Because God knows all, sees all, hears all. He's everywhere. Everywhere, all the time. So he stands ready to protect us, ready to guard us. He stands ready. He stands ready. But sometimes he allow us to go through 
He don't lead us around the mountain all the time. He don't lead us over the mountain all the time. He don't pull us out of the valley all the time. He allows us to go through. Mama. Sometimes. Sometimes. I can't say all the time, but I can say sometimes. Sometimes. And you know, allowing us to go through, I think it makes us stronger and makes us appreciate the things that we have and the things that God does for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Because if we didn't, you know, w- would we pray as much? Would we have that conversation with him as much? Would we commune with him as much? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I was listening to a song today that says, Lord, while I'm going going through my every trial, my every pain, my every situation, all it does is keep me on my knees closer to you. Lord have mercy. Okay. Job's face response to his tragedies, verse 22. In, in all of this. In all of this. Okay. All right. Go ahead. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. Job's faith response to his tragedy. Faith in God is a tremendous source of strength when one is facing tragic loss. Handling the personal stress occasioned by loss is one of life's greatest challenges, and it requires a strong and viable faith. <laughs> William E. Hume has helpfully noted that Job went from a position of prominence in the community to becoming the butt of golf open. It is instructive to note, however, that in all this, Job sin not, nor charge God foolishly. This statement which summarizes Job's faith in response to the tragedy that had befallen him teaches at least two things about faith. The first is that faith is not dependent upon the constant flow of God's blessings. Second, while faith may be tested and is often severely shaken, it is not necessarily destroyed by tragic loss. Although the culmination of Job's losses did not destroy his faith, it did create for him a religious problem, best summarized in the question, what kind of God will allow these tragic things to happen to me when I have been so faithful to him? Mm. Mm. And you see, when you read on, when you read on in, uh, with the book of Job, you see, he asked God. He asked God. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't get around not asking the questions. He couldn't get around not asking the questions. He had to ask God, what did I do to deserve this? But yet and still, yet and still, he still trusted him. He still trusted him to bring him through. Now, the writer of this could have very well said, could have very well not have told us that he even thought that. But who wouldn't think that if you going through and you felt like, well, Lord, I've, I've crossed every T I've dotted every I, what have I done to deserve this happening to me? And we got to, and we got to realize we're in the old Testament and we got to realize that, that Jesus had not come on the scene but he had a communication with God. Job had a communication with God. He could talk to God. 
probably even when his friends come and sit in front of him staring at him. Because I'm sure when word got out, everybody was shocked. Why would Job lose everything? I can't believe yeah. Job. Anybody but Job. Anybody but Job. You know? And then they said, well, Job, you got to have done something. What What did you do? And you know, it's just like our children. When some of our when our children are going through and they and, and you don't understand what's happening, and they say, I ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing. Why? Why am I going through this? I haven't done a thing. And you yeah. looking at them and saying, Oh, you done done something. <laughs> yeah. Love done crossed your path. Oh Lord have mercy. So here it tells us that we better be careful how we even judge our children. When we put our children in the hands of the Lord, that's where we need to leave them. Is it hard? Is it difficult? Yes, it is. But when we, when we put them in his hands, we got to leave them. We got to be just like Job. We got to look and we got to say, Lord, they're hurting. I'm hurting. But I know you got this. I know you got it. I know that there is going to be a deliverance. I know when you work it out, it won't be a band-aid. It won't be a wrapped bandage on nothing. When you work it out, it's going to be worked out. Totally. It's going to be fixed when you do it. They may not see that it was fixed. But I can guarantee you parents sitting on the outside looking in, they see when God fixes things. No band-aids. Mm -mm. No. Band-aids get wet and they fall off. Even the ones that they make that is that is waterproof. They end up falling off. But when God fixes it. When God steps in. When Jesus. When Jesus done told his father. About what's going on. With you. And when they work out. A plan it's fixed. It's done. You ain't got to worry about it. You can think about it. It may come across your mind, but you won't worry about it because you know God's going to handle it. Lord have mercy. His faith response to his tragedies. His faith response. Didn't destroy his faith. He didn't. It didn't destroy his faith. He still had faith in God, but he still had to ask the question. He still had to ask the question. Why? Why me? I know when I. I know when I got cancer. I. I didn't think that I was above anybody else. I just want to know why me, Lord. Why? Why me? Why? Mm, why me? I didn't ask him what did I do. I just asked him why. And then one night, he just as plain as day. I thought I was asleep, and I heard his voice. Why not you? Why not you? How are you going to be able? To give a testimony to something that you've never experienced. How are you going to be able to help somebody else through? And all I can say is when I was in Chapel Hill, I experienced helping somebody else through. I experienced that. The nurses would come get me 
Do you mind going to talking to so-and-so? Do you mind going in this room talking to so-and-so? No, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. You never know. You never know. The purpose of God carrying you through certain things and allowing certain things to happen in your life. You never know how you, how it can be used to help somebody else. <clears throat> you never know. We say we're his hands and we're his feet. Don't we say that? Yeah. So if we're his hands and we're his feet, he got to use us for something. Got to be used for something. Lord have mercy. Verses 1 through 3 and then 11. <laughs> At last Job spoke and he cursed the day of his birth. He said, let the day of my birth be erased and the night I was conceived. Why wasn't I born dead? Why didn't I die as I came from the womb? Job's faith bogs down in despair. The religious problem that Job faced brought him to be the very edge of to the very edge of despair. His days of silence had ended. His days of questioning God's mysterious ways with those who trusted him had begun. Job began to entertain thoughts that caused him to have some doubts about God's fairness and justice. Job knew that he had done everything he could to sustain an ever-growing and intimate relationship with God. What he could not understand, however, was why God had ceased bestowing his blessings. Job wanted desperately to know why God had withdrawn his care and favor. We tend to be well-versed in faith's capacity to believe. We have much homework to do, however, if we are to embrace faith's capacity to doubt or to at least question God's ways with us. Doubt is not faith's enemy. Nor is it the opposite of faith. The opposite of faith is unbelief. Unbelief says there is no God with whom to discuss the tragedies of life. Faith that dares to doubt says there is a God whose ways I do not fully understand. Therefore, I will be honest about my doubts and pray that God will entertain my question and in his own time reassure me of his care and guidance. Job's religious problem is common to all who are challenged to live with the terrible consequences of tragedy. Have you ever been in a tragic situation to ask God for help, only to feel that he was not helping at all? You waited and waited. You kept on petitioning God to intervene and change your circumstances, and things grew worse. Job is not hesitant about exercising the faith to engage with doubt. His first step toward dealing with his, double, with his doubts involves being honest with himself honest enough to admit all his senses of anguish and despair over God's treatment of him. Job is to be commended for having the kind of faith that takes doubt seriously. He opened his mouth and cursed his day. In other words, Job's situation of loss coupled with his bewilderment about God's ways resulted in his desire to die without having lived. Job is not threatening suicide here. Rather, he is lamenting the day of his birth. He reasoned that he had not been born, he would not have experienced the tragedies that had brought him to the point of despair. Tragedy is a part of living in a fallen world. Moreover, God has not promised people of faith a life free of tragedy. He has promised, however, to be with us when tragedy occurs. In the face of tragedy, we may, like Job, rue the day of our birth. But let us pray that at the end of the day, our faith and our continued dialogue with God about our doubts will give us the spiritual resources necessary to live victoriously with the consequences of tragedy. Mm. You're gone. Mm. 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 Couldn't hang on. <laughs> Joe's faith bogs down in despair. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You out, go ahead. Lord have mercy. It wasn't God that he was upset with. I thought you wanted to talk to your mama. It wasn't God that he was angry with. It wasn't God that he blamed and and for everything that it was going he was going through. He kind of blamed himself. 
He kind of blamed himself. And like I said, he didn't choose to, to have, to, uh, to want to die while he was going through. He said, if I had never been born, if I had a, came out of the womb dead, if, if, if I had not existed, then I wouldn't have to go through this. He didn't blame God. He didn't blame God. And I, and I think this lesson lets us know, not just this lesson, but anybody who's read the book of Job or read about what Job went through, anybody who's read that, and it, it lets us know that in our minds, in, in our minds, we, we wonder why do we have to go through? Why, why is it? And we hear it all the time from people. If we, if God is who he is, why does he allow all the, all the wars and rumors of wars? Why is it that our children have to go fight in a war? Why is it that all this, they did it back there then. They did it in the biblical days. When he took, when he told them to go and take Canaan, there was war. There was war when he told them, kill everything in the city. And a lot of things that are happening now is because they didn't do what they were told to do. They let kings live in Canaan that should, that they should have killed when they went to war and took the land. We serve a God that when he says do something here, we want to figure out how we can best do it. Uh, where it won't affect me, where I won't get tired, where, uh, oh my goodness, I got to lose sleep. I got to think. <laughs> it becomes me, me, me. Not just, okay, God, you said for me to do it. You know, I don't know what the results are going to be, but you do. And I know that you're going to give me everything I need to get done what you need for me to do. So I'm just going to go on and do it. When I think about the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when I think about them, being thrown into a fiery furnace. And the king turns up the heat in the furnace. Turns it up so bad that the ones that threw them in, they, the, they got burned up. And they were walking around. And when the king looked in there, and he said, did, did we not throw three men in the furnace? Because I see four. And that fourth one must be their God. Protecting them. And even the king knew that if he had a thrown his, when you look at your own men getting burned, throwing them in there, you know you your idol that you serve would have been burned up too. Because you had to pick him up and throw him in there. When you think about what some of them did to stand up for God, Daniel being thrown in the lion's den, cover on this side. If I don't live on this side, if I can't get through on this side, I know that the other side is going to be even the better. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Charmaine has joined us and, and she said, let go, let God 
we always pray to God when we are going through things, but we're not willing to let go. He can't turn. He can turn it around to our good. We are too busy praying to him and trying. We are too busy praying to him and trying to fix it. Oh, fix it still instead of letting it go and let him take care of it. Lord knows that's the truth. That's the truth. We 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 act like he can't handle it. We we still got to we still got to, to do it. That that's why when 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 there's an altar call at the church, when there's an altar call at the church, take it to the altar and leave it there. Leave it there. Don't pick it up. Don't worry about whether it got handled soon as you left the altar. Because he will work it out. But when he work it out, it's going to be where you won't have to worry about it anymore. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you. We praise you and we give you glory, Lord, for this lesson. We thank you, God, for just allowing us, allowing us to be able to know you and to understand. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you. And we praise you and we worship you. For, Lord, you are worthy. Heavenly Father, you're worthy. You're worthy. Lord, Look beyond our faults and see our needs and help us, Lord, to bring you our faults and ask for forgiveness for anything, Lord, and give them the strength that they need. That when everything is over, that, Lord, that you are there. God, we thank you. We thank you. For, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Lord, continue to be with each and every one of us on this line, every family that's represented, Lord, on our Facebook. Be with us, O Heavenly Father. Be with us. And Lord, as we move into the season, as we move into the Advent season, help us, Lord, to understand. Help us to understand that you have been the reason for every day and for every season. Jesus, you have been the reason for our living. And don't allow our living, Lord, to be in vain. God, we thank you. We praise you. Continue to bless each and every one. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, amen. 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 We pray that everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving.